Hey guys, it's MJ, the Student Act Tree, and this is episode 4 of the financing model. In this video, we consider the final method, which is crystallization. But just a general recap, this model is looking at four different ways of financing um, the purchase of a new asset for a business that is going to generate extra sales. The four methods are self-funding, so the business raises up enough money, and uh, when it has enough in the bank account, as we can see here, it then purchases the asset, uh, which causes the profit to increase uh, going forward. The other three methods um, look at getting the money up front right in the beginning. And the benefit of this is that you can see the profit starts at a little bit of a higher rate um, because of these extra monthly sales that are generated. So the higher those monthly sales are going to be, the more beneficial it's going to be to go for one of the, the funding right at the beginning. And the three ways you can fund money from the beginning, the one way is to take a loan. Um, how a loan works is someone gives you money and they don't really care what you do with it as long as you pay back. So it doesn't matter how much money you make or how much profit you do or how many things you sell, you're still going to pay a fixed amount um, until you've repaid your loan. And this is what we've got over here. We can adjust the interest rate and the term of the loan. Check out my video episode two, where I discuss this in more detail. Uh, another method of raising finance is through equity. Equity is someone gives you some money and they are very interested in what you do with it because they are going to be getting a proportion back in the form of a dividend. So they're very concerned with how many items you sell and they're very concerned with what is your profit margin, you know, what are your operating expenses, because they share in the business. So if the business is very profitable, they get some profit. But if the business doesn't do very, if the business does very badly, they're not going to get that much money back. So it is a little bit more uh, risky than the loan uh, for, from the investor's point of view. And so, like I said, they're going to be very interested in your sales and in your operational costs and activities. And then there's a third method, which I don't think you guys are going to be very familiar with. It is something that you only learn in actuarial science honors if you take finance as a speciality. And it's something known as crystallization. And crystallization, um, to try and keep this explanation quite nice and simple, it's when somebody gives you money and they're only focused on the sales. So the volume of the sales. They don't care what your operating expenses are. They don't care what your profit margin is. They're just very concerned with the volume that you're selling. So the more you sell, the happier they are. Because the agreement is that for every item you sell, they get a reward. That is crystallization. So those are the three, um, three ways of raising finance. Oh yeah, if you want to look more about the whole equity, that is in episode three. So this is the final episode, episode four. We're going to be considering the crystallization and we're going to be doing the final comparison of them all. So with the model, um, this is it in a near final state. You can, these are the following inputs. So you can input the amount of um, money that the business starts off with initially. I've got it as zero, but you could, you know, say they've got 500,000, um, you know, starting off in the bank. And you can see how, this will now allow them to purchase the new asset much earlier and extend it. Where remember, if we make that zero, there. Did you see how that jumps over there? So that's that's what the starting bank balance. It's mainly for the self-financing route uh, because the more money you have in the bank, the earlier you can purchase the new asset, which is good because you can generate more sales. I've then got the the monthly sales. Um, how much are you selling? How much volume? Um, in, I mean, in the example, we've, we've been talking about beer, so this could be the amount of beer that the bar is selling every month, so 7,000 beers. Then what we have here is the price per sale, so how much does each beer go for? Um, here it's going for 40 rand. Rand is a South African currency. Uh, around 20 rand equals a pound, um, if you want to do a little conversion in your head. So that could be, what? two pounds and that's one pound. But anyway, we're going to stick to rands because South Africa is the best country in the world. Um, so this is the price per sale of the beer. And so the, the greater we make that, that's going to be influencing a lot of the crystallization. And I'll get back to that one. 
The one which affects equity, loan, or basically all of them is the prof profit per sale. So I mean, if we take that from 20 and we push it up to say 30, um, this is the profit margin, you can see all the numbers jump up. So the higher the profits, the better it is for, for everyone. And this is where businesses make their money. This is where they add value to society. The fact that they can add a profit to the sale of an item shows that they're doing something right. Then what we have is the annual volume increase. So every year, um, a business could expect their, their sales to increase. I mean, we could even make that zero. Um, you can see it makes the, the profit uh, graph look a little bit um, boring then. We can make it, say, 5%. Uh, we can make it 20% and we'll see this is going to be having bigger effects later down the line but let's just keep it there at 10%. Then we've also got the monthly interest rate that the bank balance accumulates by. Um, this is a monthly interest rate so you can make it I mean you can make it a half a percent or, or whatever the interest rate is. Oh, it's just showing one because I need to show there we go show more of the things. Okay, this is the price of the new asset. So this is how much um, the new bar is going to cost in the case of beer. Um, it could be the cost of a new factory, whatever, new shop, all that type of stuff. And we're also determining how many they are. So we could even check this out. If we make it two new bars, um, you can see how it adjusts the prices and stuff like that. And you'll see self-financing that has to wait again before it can buy the second bar. So you can see self-financing really struggles when you're buying um, two or, I mean, look at what happens if you make it even three. You can see how that value goes. Um, the reason being is that the other three methods are benefiting from the extra monthly sales right in the beginning. So let's just keep that as one. Um, and then your extra monthly sales, again, the higher this value is, the better it is to get the money in the beginning. I mean, if we made it one extra sale, you could see, um, I mean, here we see on the graph, bank almost jumps up to second second place, self-financing. But anyway, I'll get, I'll get to that. Let's just keep it at 6,000 um, over there. So we will expect it to perform just a little bit worse than the main bar, because the main bar has been going for a while, and like I said, sales do accumulate every every year. So these are the assumptions we're making. So remember, all models have got a whole bunch of assumptions. So this is the information we put in. And remember, with equity, we could say how much equity you wanted to sell. Like, let's say if we made it just, say, 25%. Oh, you can see equity jumps up to second place. I mean, if equity is 1%, then you can see equity is the best option. So what that's saying, let's jump to the output, is that is it beneficial to do equity? This is comparing to self-financed. The answer is yes. The total equity invested and the total cash that they receive is minuscule. So we're saying they're just going to get 1% of the profits. You can see it is a dreadful, dreadful um, return for the company. But I mean, if they had to say take 50%, we can see that it's no longer beneficial. They're investing $3 million they're receiving back um, nine and a half million. So they're getting a great return, but look how much that is costing to the company. And that's what this graph over here is showing. Look how expensive equity is if they take a big chunk. Then with loan, I mean, we could, but let's just bring this back to something more reasonable, say 30%. Um, loan, this is, this is one where the higher the interest rate, the, the worse it is. So this is a monthly interest rate because we're assuming the things done monthly. Uh, check this out. If we say make this 5%, look how, how loan then jumps up as the most expensive form of financing. In this case, you'll be borrowing $3 million. You have to pay back almost 7.5, oh, yeah, just over 7.5 million. Um, if we make interest rate 3%, you can see it's beneficial and you're only having to pay back $5 million. And you can see it's actually comes in cheaper than equity. So just like this, this model is very beneficial for people who just want to see, compare um, loan equity to self-financing. I mean, this model is fantastic for it. But I have added in this extra feature known as crystallization. And that's what I want to show you guys now. This is where, where finance gets very interesting. And it's a little bit mysterious, but because watch this. Crystallization is the best option. And what happens here is that you determine how many 
how many months of beer you're going to be crystallizing. Um, then this is the amount of investors you want. And this determines when people redeem the, the coin uh, or redeem. Yeah, so what, sorry, let me explain the coins there. The idea with crystallization is that you crowdfund. So in this case, we want to crowd from a from thousand people. So a thousand people come to the business. They give them each, where's the amount here? It's cost per crystal. They give 3,000 each. Um, and then what happens is that's where we get the 3 million from. So the, the money's been raised through crowdfunding in a sense. And then each person who buys a crystal, they're going to get one thousandth of a beer token. So every time a beer is sold, a beer token is generated. Um, this is a beer that needs to be redeemed by the investors. And how it works is that you spread it among the thousand people. So what then happens is um, after you've sold a thousand beers, each person will have one beer token. They can come into a bar and redeem that beer token for um, a glass of beer. And the fun part is that over here, a, for the company or the business, beer costs 20 rand. But to the public or the investor, that beer is worth 40 rand. And remember, crystallization is based on the amount of sales. Uh, so sales and the price of that item. Whereas equity is on the sales and the profit per that item. So because of that, we're going to be seeing that for the the people or the investor who goes the crystallization route is they're getting a hundred and eight percent return that's an annual return of a hundred and eight percent and that is huge compared to say thirty eight percent that the investor is getting if he goes equity by buying thirty percent and the reason for this discrepancy is because of the price so I mean if we make that price thirty you'll see how that jumps down to fifty six if the item is a hundred rand, you can see it goes up astronomically high. So in this biz, it works very well for businesses that have quite a high markup on their their items. Whereas you can see profit, uh, if we increase the profit to say forty five, or no, that would be can't do it over forty five. So let's say beer costs ten rand and they sold it for thirty rand. Okay, look at that. Crystallization doesn't change at all, but look at equity equity jumps up to 57% return. So equity is very sensitive to the profit per sale, whereas crystallization is not affected by it. Crystallization is affected by the price. So you can see by changing the profit per sale, it does not affect crystallization. And this makes crystallization a very interesting proposal for an investor. If I'm an investor and I think the sale of beer is going to go up, but I don't want to be exposed to how the barman runs his bar, what his expenses are, what he uses the, the money for, how much staff he employs, then I don't want to go the equity route because going equity, I'm influenced by that. I don't want to go the loan route because it, I'm thinking beer sales are going to go up. I'm not getting any upside exposure by going the loan. So crystallization gives me the option to get that exposure on the sales of beer without having the exposure to how the business is run and that makes for for a lot of fun and where the the big bonus comes in is that or although i guess you could say this is the big con of crystallization is that you are paid out in uh, coins so you are paid out in these tokens a cryptocurrency can be based on a blockchain or on a database where you get these coins for um, return instead of cash but these coins can then be redeemed for the product so and that's why it's, it's crowdfunding so with equity you might have one investor with loan you might have one bank issuing the loan but here we can determine how many people um, we want to raise raise money from so a thousand people oh no so in this case we're charging each crystal a thousand rand so it'll be three thousand rand per person and a company can do a little social media campaign, raise awareness, tell people in their shops. So it should be quite a fun way to get um, people to buy in. And it, it's almost working like a bit like a loyalty program. So I've even added something here where companies who have issued loyalty programs in the past get a little bit of a benefit. So you could say that there's a 10% um, increase in sales due to um, 
due to the, the securitization. And you can see then that very comfortably puts crystallization as the, the most the highest profit generating and the best option for as terms of bank balance. And you can see as far as repayment, so you're raising three million from the people and you're the company is only paying back three million one hundred and twenty thousand. So it's very, very cheap for the business. It's very, very rewarding for the investor. But like I said, the only con or drawback is that you are receiving your your um, your return in this cryptocurrency that can only be exchanged for one product, whereas in the others you are receiving cash, which you can use to buy other products. So if you love beer, and you th then then this is like the best method to go for, and that's well under these conditions. Um, the best option you can see is crystallization, and I've also put the second best as equity. I mean, if we had to change these these amounts, um, coin redemption just affects uh, liquidity. Well, sorry, yeah, the liquidity of the profit. So the idea is that um, people aren't gonna, you know, it takes time for them to generate that beer token. They only get it, and you sell one beer. It's only after you sell a thousand beers that those beer tokens become activated or or able to be redeemed. And what we can do is, I mean, if we change this amount to say a hundred percent, you can see it's it's just changing. So this is um, all the beer sold in the first year are redeemed, and you get no profit. And you can see that could have um, a bad cash flow problem. So it is something to consider: is that uh, crystallization might give you a little bit of cash flow problems in the beginning, but you could make the assumption that everyone's not going to redeem their coins straight away. Um, they might just redeem, say, 50%, or we could even be quite conservative and, say, go with 75%. And this way, you're still receiving money in the beginning, uh, so you're still receiving enough money for petty cash and stuff. Um, but you can see right at the beginning, it does have a little bit of a drain. So that is one thing you do want to consider as well. But that's up for the business. So what the model is designed to do is to... You have a bunch of inputs, you put in your, your assumptions, you put in your data, it goes through this little Excel sheet, and once all these values have been calculated, it generates a nice, pretty looking graph to display the output, um, gives a more detailed explanation over here, and then comes up with its conclusion of what it recommends. Although remember, models always come with a disclaimer. Um, I mean, this is a deterministic model, it does not capture volatility. Um, that's just for simplicity reasons. So remember not to always take a model to be like, oh, the model said crystallization is the best, and then go crystallization, and, and you, you know, your company could burn. Um, okay, I don't think it would burn, but you know, if something bad happens to it, um, just use the model to aid your decision, and don't treat it like a, you know, like gospel that oh, this is the truth. Um, always consult financial professionals and all that other stuff. Remember, it does come with a disclaimer. But yeah, that is that is the model. Um, I know crystallization, it might be, um, you might have heard that and been like, what on earth was I talking about? Like I said, it is something that you only learn post-grad actuarial science if you're specializing in finance. Um, it is very intense. If you want to read up more about it, there's something called securitization, which works, it's it's similar, it's not exactly the same, but it's, it's similar. Um, you can check up securitization. But that is the model in a nutshell. Like I said, check out episode one, two, and three uh, to see a more focus on the self-funding, the loan, and the equity. But sure, otherwise, that is the end of this video. Thanks for watching till the end. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And stay subscribed as I'll be releasing more models and cryptocurrency talks and study videos and all that other cool stuff. So otherwise, enjoy the rest of your evening. Cheers.